Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanza. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 9th of June. Indians struggle to cope amid scorching temperatures and water shortage. Pakistan Army warns of legal action over malicious allegations against its leadership. and Nepal's double impute mountaineer ice Mount Everest next season. And now for all the details. People in parts of India are experiencing a brutal heat wave that is throwing life out of gear. The scorching temperatures have also resulted in water shortage in the country's western and central region, with scientists linking the phenomenon to climate change. With the rising mercury breaking several old records, residents across parts of India, particularly northern and western region, continued to experience extreme heat wave conditions on Thursday. Most people stayed indoors in capital New Delhi during the afternoon, while those out for work took shelter under trees and consumed fluids. The India Meteorological Department has forecast heat wave conditions to continue over northwest, central and adjoining East India during the next two days. Tourist footfall to the famous Taj Mahal monument in northern Agra city has also been low amid the scorching temperatures, which hovered around 42 to 43 degrees Celsius on Thursday. While heat waves are common in India, summer began early this year in March with the highest average temperatures in 122 years. The record-breaking heat wave has also led to acute water shortage in parts of India's western Maharashtra and central Madhya Pradesh states. Women in Maharashtra's Nasik district were seen walking several kilometers in a forest to fetch water with pitchers on their heads under the blistering sun. The water source has shifted from wells which are now dried up to muddy and scanty natural water bodies. Scientists have linked the early onset of an intense summer and water scarcity to climate change. India and Iran held wide-ranging talks aimed at enhancing bilateral ties as Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian met his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and called on Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi on Wednesday. Indian Foreign Ministry in a presser on Thursday said that profit remarks controversy was not discussed during the meeting between the two foreign ministers, while asserting that tweets and views on the issue don't reflect the views of the Indian government. India's Foreign Ministry on Thursday denied that the visiting Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullah Hyan raised the controversial remarks on Prophet Muhammad by members of the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party who have since been sacked over the issue. The issue drew strong condemnation from several Islamic nations. Earlier, an Iranian statement had claimed that its foreign minister had raised the controversial remarks in a meeting with National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Wednesday. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakchi, however, emphasized that the issue was not raised during the meeting between the two foreign ministers. He reiterated that tweets and comments don't reflect views of the government. We have made it pretty clear that the tweets and comments do not reflect the views of the government. This has been conveyed to our interlocutors as also the fact that action has been taken by the concerned quarters against those who made the comments and tweets. Iranian Foreign Minister in Twitter post on Thursday said Tehran and New Delhi agreed on the need to respect divine religions and Islamic sanctities and to avoid divisive statements. Abdullah Hyan, who is on his first Indian visit since assuming office last year, held two rounds of talks with his Indian counterpart S. Jashankar. A broad range of issues of mutual interest between the two countries in strategic, political, economic and cultural spheres were discussed during the meeting. 
They also exchanged views on regional issues, Afghanistan and Ukraine. The two sides also signed an agreement on mutual legal assistance in civil and commercial matters. He also met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who warmly recalled the long-standing civilizational and cultural links between the two countries. He is on a three-day visit to India to enhance bilateral ties. In news from Pakistan, the Pakistan Army has refuted allegations against its top leadership by a senior journalist claiming that former Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen was asked to switch sides and abandon the previous PTI-led government. The country's powerful military in a statement said it reserved the rights to take legal action against those involved in baseless propaganda. The Pakistan Army on Wednesday refuted allegations leveled against its top leadership by senior journalist Shaheen Sebai and others and said that it reserved the right to take legal action against those involved in baseless propaganda. In a tweet on Wednesday, Sebai claimed that military establishment had asked former Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen to betray former Prime Minister Imran Khan and help the incumbent Premier Shehbaz Sharif. Shaukat Tareen also refuted Sebai's claims in a tweet. This comes as Imran Khan, who was ousted as the Prime Minister in a parliamentary vote in April, has been demanding fresh elections. He has claimed that the United States was behind his downfall, an assertion that Washington denies. But reports suggest he had lately fallen out with the country's powerful military over differences for the appointment of country's top intelligence chief. The military has directly ruled the country for almost half its nearly 75-year history. It viewed Khan and his conservative agenda favorably when he won election in 2018, but that support waned over the appointment and economic troubles. Moving on, the rising level of unemployment in Gilgit Baltistan continues to be a cause of worry for the locals as many youngsters are dying by suicide due to lack of job opportunities. The ground reality suggests the government is hardly bothered about their concerns and aspirations. Gilgit Baltistan, a region under Pakistan's illegal control, is witnessing a sudden surge in suicide cases in recent months. The spiraling suicide cases has baffled the mountain communities in the region, otherwise known for its valleys, peaks, lakes and scenic beauty. This exposes the government's inefficiency to deal with mental health problems and other long-lasting shortcomings facing the people. Locals allege that many have attempted suicide and many lost their lives due to poverty and unemployment. They allege that authorities have failed to make any preventive services available and the agencies, government or private, and NGOs are only doing the paperwork. The people of Gilgit Baltistan have long claimed that Pakistan government is hardly bothered about the concerns and aspirations of the people and has failed to develop tourism and other sectors that generate employment. They claim that government has repeatedly turned a blind eye to all the problems faced by the people in territories under its illegal occupation. In news from Afghanistan, Taliban authorities on Wednesday introduced new uniforms for its reconstituted Afghan police force as the de facto government attempts to shift away from using its insurgent military forces to handle law and order. The Interior Ministry, led by Taliban officials, announced at a press conference that a new uniform had been designed for the police force. The main changes were in terms of colour, now dark blue instead of lighter grey blue, and the replacing of Afghanistan's tricoloured Republican flag with the Taliban's Islamic Emirate flag on the sleeve. Acting Deputy Interior Minister Malvi Noor Jalal Jalali said a police force with new uniforms had been a top priority since taking over Afghanistan last August. 
but did not give details on this size. The hardline Taliban is looking to transition away from an insurgent force but has used its widely feared and largely untrained fighters to implement law and order after the previous police force disbanded with the fall of the government. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepali mountaineer Hari Buddha Magar is aiming to become the world's first double above knee amputee to climb the Mount Everest next season. The 43-year-old soldier turned climber lost his legs in a bomb blast in Afghanistan in 2010. He says the incident was a turning point in his life, but he has never lost hope. Nepal's doubled above need amputee mountaineer Hari Buddha Magar, who is also a former British Gurkha soldier, is eyeing to climb the Mount Everest next spring season, his long-held dream. 43-year-old Magar lost his legs in 2010 when an improvised explosive device detonated while he was on patrol in Afghanistan. It was a turning point in his life, but he did not lose hope. Earlier this year, he skydived from a helicopter in the Khumbu region as well as trekked up to the Everest base camp on his prosthetic legs, achieving his dream to be the first above-the-knee double amputee to climb the highest mountain on earth. Um, I believe that life is all about adaptation and nothing is impossible. So, um, it shouldn't hold you, whatever happens in your life, it shouldn't hold you back. As long as you, you have got a right positive mindset and, um, and right attitude, you, know, you can achieve anything that you want in life. It wasn't easy for him though. Magar had to fight a legal battle against an earlier ban by Nepalese authorities on double amputees and blind mountaineers, which he won in 2018. Mount Everest has been climbed 10,657 times since it was first scaled in 1953 from the Nepali and Tibetan sides, with many climbing more than once. 311 people are reported to have died attempting to conquer the mountain. India's Road Transport Ministry on Wednesday announced that it has created a new Guinness World Record in laying 75 km of bituminous concrete in a single lane in 105 hours and 33 minutes on National Highway 53 between Amravati and Akola districts in Western Maharashtra state. Indian Road Transport Ministry entered the Guinness World Record book for constructing a 75-kilometer-long highway in just five days on Wednesday. The laying of the road in western Maharashtra state commenced on June 3rd and the construction of the 75-kilometer stretch in a single lane on NH53 between Amravati and Akola was completed on June 7th in a record 105 hours and 33 minutes. Indian Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari congratulated all the engineers, contractors, consultants and workers from NHAI National Highway Authority of India and Rajpath Infracon Private Limited for the efficient implementation of the project that has helped in the successful completion of this world record. NHI on the occasion of the Azadi Ki Amrut Mohotso announced by Honorable Prime Minister of India Sri Narendra Modi ji successfully completed a Guinness world record by constructing 75 km continuous bituminous concrete in single lane on NH53 between Amrauti to Akola. According to Gatkari, Amravati to the Akola section as part of NH53 is an important east-to-east -east corridor which connects major cities like Kolkata, Raipur, Nagpur and Surat. In a bizarre ritual, devotees pierce their cheeks to appease the goddess to mark the Chitrai festival on Wednesday in India's southern Koibatu city. They danced and played drums as they took out a procession during the temple festival. Hundreds of Hindu devotees on Tuesday pierced their cheeks with steel and danced to appease their goddess as they celebrated the Chitrai festival at a temple in India's southern Coimbatore city. Devotees showed no sign of pain with the belief that the goddess will heal all their wounds within 24 hours. They danced and played drums as they took out a procession during the temple festival. The annual event is celebrated as a part of the rituals held in Tamil month of Chittarai. 
தீராத வியாதிகள் இவைகளை எல்லாம் இந்த இறைவன் தீர்த்து தருவதன் காரணத்தினாலே அவங்கெல்லாம் இந்த அழகு ஊத்துறாங்க இந்த அழகு ஊத்துறதுங்கிறது எல்லா இடத்துலையும் நடக்கிறது இல்லை மிக பெரும் சக்தி வாய்ந்த ஆலயங்களில் நடக்கிற ஒரு நிகழ்ச்சி ஒன்று நிகழ்ச்சியான ஒன்று இருக்குது Devotees believe that such offerings to the goddess yield spiritual and temporal results and thus they come to this temple and surrender themselves to the presiding deity. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.